so much for being a part of our virtual worship experience. We are so grateful that you have chosen to share with us on this beautiful Sunday. On behalf of our dynamic pastor, Pastor Marlon, the leaders and members of St. Luke, you are welcome. At this time, I would like to invite you to join us on any of our social media platforms at St. Luke AME Waco. Again, that's at St. Luke AME Waco. At this time, please welcome our praise team. It feels so good to make it this far. Just lift your hands right where you are. Hallelujah. I know that we have not been in the sanctuary for some time, but I do believe that you can turn your home into a tabernacle. Two or three are gathered in God's name. God declared that God would be in the midst. And I thank you that right now, virtually, we meet that quota. And if you would just surrender to God, hallelujah. If you would just surrender to God, hallelujah, right where you are. Come on, let God, 
Let God take the pain away. Hallelujah. That is what it means to cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. It means that the things that have you burdened down, the things that are, are weighing heavy on your mind, the things that have disturbed your peace and your tranquility, when you give it over to God, Bible says he'll give you a peace that surpasses all understanding, that God will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And today, I thank God for peace. Today, I thank God for peace. Today, I thank God. And I decree and declare peace in your home. I decree and declare peace over your life. Whatever the confusion is, whatever the enemy has been trying to do to wreak havoc in your life, it stops right here and it stops right now. And you are going to experience the liberating power of Christ Jesus. And if you would just lift your hands, if you would just open your mouth and begin to bless the name of the Lord, hallelujah, for where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And today is a day of deliverance. Today is a day of healing. Today is a day where we touch heaven and God speaks to our deepest need. Amen. I don't know about you, but I've come to worship. The devil is alive. We are victorious in Jesus. We have the V-I-C-T-O-R-Y. And you ought to declare it right now that I am victorious, that I have total and complete victory in Jesus. Come on and put your blessed hands together and begin to magnify the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't make me have church all by myself. I tell you, week in and, and week out, that I don't want you to watch. I want you to worship. For those who worship the Lord must worship in spirit and in truth. Didn't say you had to worship in the sanctuary, but just said you had to worship in spirit and in truth. I just want to know where are the worshipers this morning? Hallelujah. Ah, Jesus, come on. Come on, experience the power and the presence of God right there in your living room. God's got a blessing with your name on it. And I dare you right now just to lift holy hands. I dare you right now just to lift your voice and holler out, thank you. For God is worthy to be praised. Good morning. I, I am Pastor Marlin, and I have the blessed privilege and honor of serving right here at St. Luke African Methodist Episcopal Church in the wonderful city of Waco. I greet you now in the name of Jesus and on behalf of all of the members of St. Luke. Thank you for worshiping with us. We're so glad that you decided to spend this time with us on this Lord's Day. I do pray that you have been blessed by this ministry. We have been blessed by your presence. We are encouraged by all of the likes and all of the hearts and all of the comments. We are encouraged by all of the emails that we receive as we continue to do ministry even in the midst of a pandemic. I want you once again to begin to uh, get your virtual evangelism on. We don't want to worship by ourselves, but we are believing God for increase. As crazy as that may seem, right, right now in the midst of a pandemic, we are believing God for increase. There is somebody that you know that needs Jesus. There's somebody that you know that needs a word from the Lord. And today could be the day that changes their entire life. Today could be the day where they connect with heaven and all that they have been looking for, searching for, they will find in Jesus. And so I want you to get your virtual evangelism on. I want you to invite two or three people to come and worship with us this morning. Tell them that they can find us on any of our social media platforms at St. Luke AME Waco. And if you have not liked, followed, and subscribed, we encourage you to do that. There are so many wonderful things that we are doing in ministry, and we want to make sure that you stay connected. We want to make sure that you are able to receive the rhema word as God continues to speak to our hearts and our minds. For those of you who have connected with us on our social media platforms, you know that you can go to our YouTube page and all the sermons that have been preached, all the words that have been shared,
shared, you can find and you can feast on God's word anytime you want to. Amen. Come on, take some time to invite some people. Tell them it's about to go down at St. Luke. Tell them it's about to go down at St. Luke. Amen. We want to prepare our hearts and minds to receive the word of God. Listen, as we prepare to receive God's word, I want to thank all of you who through your generosity and your giving have supported the ministry here at St. Luke. It is because of you that we can do this very broadcast. It is because of you that the quality of our worship experience continues to increase because your giving makes the difference. Bible says you can't beat God given no matter how hard you try. And I want to let you in on a little secret. Can I let you in on a secret? If you want to be blessed, you've got to learn to give. That's the secret, and it's really not a secret. It's something that you should already know. If you want to be blessed, you've got to learn to give. Bible says that it is more blessed to give than to receive. And, and, and the measure in which you give, it shall be given back to you good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over, God will give unto you. And I want to encourage you this morning to be a blessing to this ministry. If you have been tuning in week in and week out, and if the word of God has encouraged you, I invite you to use any of our giving platforms. Easiest way to give is to visit our website, St. Luke AME Waco. Uh, dot org. And if you go to our give tab, you can follow the steps. It's the easiest way to give. And I do want you to know that your gift, it makes a difference. Your gift, it changes lives. Your gift brings healing. Your gift brings deliverance. And we thank you for your generosity. Amen. As we prepare now to receive the word, I ask that you would just bow your heads. Right where you are, I ask that you would just bow your head. And just begin to humble yourself. Hallelujah. Begin to humble yourself and position yourself so that you might receive what God has for you this morning. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, I am forever grateful. Because God, I know that if it had not been for you on my side, that I would not be standing here this morning. But God, you remain faithful. All of your promises, God, they are yea and amen. And this morning, as we enter into a sacred space, we ask you, God, that you would give us ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. For God, we need a word from you. God, we need to hear from you. Because if we don't hear from you, God, what will we do? Now, God, my prayer is always simple. Allow me to preach what I believe and to believe what I preach. Because God, if I don't believe it, then I should not preach it. And God, I pray for your people that they would not only be hearers of your word. Help Holy Ghost. I pray they would be doers of your word. For truly thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, both now and forever. And the people of God said, thank God and amen. Praise God this morning. If you would. Go with me to the Old Testament book of Judges. The Old Testament book of Judges, chapter 3. And I want to read for your hearing verses 12 through 30. Judges, chapter 3. <clears throat> and I do want to read uh, for your hearing this morning, verses 12 through verse 30. And you can... Follow along with me on your tablets, on your computers, on your Bibles, whatever device or platform that you have as we share in God's holy word. Judges chapter 3, <coughs> beginning at, 
at verse 12, concluding with verse 30, and the word of the Lord declares, Again the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And because they did evil, the Lord gave Eglon, king of Moab, power over Israel. Getting the Ammonites and Amalekites to join him, Eglon came and attacked Israel. And they took possession of the city of Palms. The Israelites were subject to Eglon, king of Moab, for 18 years. Again, the Israelites cried out to the Lord and gave them, again, verse 15, the Israelites cried out to the Lord, and he gave them a deliverer, Ehud, a left-handed man, the son of Giara, the Benjamite. The Israelites sent him with tribute to Eglon, king of Moab. Now Ehud had made a double-edged sword, about a cubit long, which he had strapped to his right thigh under his clothing. He presented the tribute to Eglon, king of Moab, who was a very fat man. And after Ehud had presented the tribute, he went on, he sent on their way those who had carried it. But on reaching the stone images near Gilgal, he himself went back to Eglon and said, Your Majesty, I have a secret message for you. Then the king said to his attendants, Leave us. And they all left. Ehud then approached him, and while he was sitting alone in the upper room of his palace and said, I have a message from God for you. And as the king rose from his seat, Ehud reached with his left hand and drew the sword from his right thigh, plunged it into the belly of the king. Even the handle sank in after the blade, and his bowels discharged. Ehud did not pull the sword out, and the fat closed in over it. Then Ehud went out of the porch. He shut the doors of the upper room behind him and locked them. And after he had gone, the servants came and found the doors of the upper room locked. They said he must be relieving himself in the inner room of the palace. They waited to the point of embarrassment, but when he did not open the doors of the room, they took the key and unlocked them. And there they saw their Lord fallen to the floor dead. While they waited, Ehud got away. He passed by the stone images and escaped to Sariah, uh, when he arrived there, he blew a trumpet to the hill country. He blew a trumpet in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites went down with him from the hills, with him leading them. Follow me, he ordered, for the Lord has given Moab your enemy into your hands. So they followed him down and took possession of the fords of the Jordan that led to Moab. They allowed no one to cross over. And at that time, they struck down about 10,000 Moabites, all vigorous and strong. Not one escaped. That day, Moab was made subject to Israel, and the land had peace for 80 years. Amen. This morning, I want to share with you from the thought, from the theme, say it loud. Say it. Say it loud. Amen. One band, one sound. One band, one sound. And that is the phrase that is echoed throughout the classic and iconic movie, Drumline. It is a phrase that is repeated by Dr. Lee, who is the band director of the fictional HBCU Atlanta a and T University. Now on the surface, the call for one band, one sound appears to be a call for uniformity. But it's really not a call for uniformity, it is actually a call for harmony, and harmony is vastly different than uniformity. See, harmony cannot exist without difference. Uniformity, uh, it, it seeks to eliminate all differences so that everything sounds the same, looks the same, and is the same. 
Harmony, on the other hand, it, it provides space for things to be different. Harmony is not everyone sounding the same, looking the same, and being the same, but harmony is everyone having the confidence to lift their particular note and to play their particular part. Harmony recognizes that when everyone is able to express themselves and to express their own unique sound, the result is beautiful music. But when there is just one note that misses its part, the harmony is incomplete. And that's why it's imperative that, that you become comfortable with who you are because if you are not hitting your note, if you are not playing your part, if you are trying to master someone else's instrument to the detriment of all humanity, there is a lack of harmony. And I want you to know this morning that you are purpose. God created you to be you. God did not create you for you to become someone else. And that's why we're focusing in on this sermon series, You Are Purpose. Last week we looked at Adam and Eve and we were able to see that our ultimate value is intrinsic, not instrumental. Our ultimate value is not based upon what we do and what we accomplish. Our ultimate value is rooted in who we are apart from all external factors because as the psalmist says, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. In our text today, we actually are entering into a very desperate situation. Children of Israel have been under Moabite occupation for 18 years, but all of that is about to come to an end because God has raised up a deliverer in the person and personality of Ehud. See, after Joshua led the children of Israel into the promised land, he admonished them to obey the commands of the Lord because by doing so, they would be able to represent God to the other nations. The book of Judges begins with the death of Joshua. And we quickly find out that Israel did not heed his admonishment and they strayed away from the will of God. See, while they were in the promised land, the Israelites would become like other nations following their cultural and religious practices. And as a result of their sin, as a result of their rebellion, God would allow the Israelites to be conquered and oppressed. After being oppressed for a while, uh, the, the, the Israelites eventually, they would see the error in their ways. They would come to their senses. They would cry out to God in repentance. God would then hear their cry. And after hearing their cry, God would raise up a deliverer that would liberate the people of God from their bondage. The book of Judges, it, it gets its name from the type of leaders that Israel had during that time. Before Israel had kings, the, the tribes were governed by judges. And these judges should not be seen in the same light as a modern day magistrate. These judges were not like Judge Judy, Judge Mathis, or Judge Joe Brown. These judges, they were military leaders. And the type of leaders from which the, the book derives its name, that being military leaders, is a sign that the book of Judges is a violent and disturbing book. But in the midst of the violence, there is an underlining hope that is found in the book of Judges. Scholars have identified an overarching theme that governs the book of Judges. 
It is a cycle of sin, oppression, repentance, deliverance, and peace. It is a cycle of sin, oppression, repentance, deliverance, and peace. That is the overarching theme that governs the book of Judges, sin, oppression, repentance, deliverance, and peace, and it repeats itself throughout the book. Following their deliverance, there would be a time of peace. Following their deliverance, there would be a time of prosperity. But eventually, Israel would begin to sin again and they would find themselves back in bondage the cycle of sin oppression repentance deliverance and peace it sets the pattern for what we see in the book of judges i say that because it is to be noted that the book of judges is a book of assimilation the children of israel uh, in the book of Judges, we see that they lose their identity and they start to become like other nations. And that's what makes Ehud so remarkable. For Ehud is just one of three judges who actually maintain the identity and the integrity of being a child of the Most High God. Ehud was, was unique. Ehud was unique because Ehud was a left-handed leader in a right-handed world. The Bible emphasizes that Ehud was left-handed. And in that particular time, being left-handed came with considerable cultural baggage. See, in the eyes of an Israelite, to be left-handed was regarded as a physical defect. To be left-handed, it, 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 it meant that something was wrong with you. And I want you to imagine. And I would venture to say that you don't have to imagine too hard. But I want you to imagine the world that you were born into says something is wrong with you because you are different than the dominant culture. I want you to uh, uh, imagine that the world you are born into says something is wrong with you because you're different. That, that because you are left-handed, you are not 100%, but instead, because you are left-handed, you are somehow defective and you are seen as less than and, and you are ultimately devalued because you're different. Imagine that the world you're born into says that you are three-fifths of a person because you're different. See, living uh, in a world that, that, that will reduce who you are because you are different, living in a world like that, it can make you doubt yourself. Living in a world like, like that, it can make you question who you are. Living in a world like that can make you struggle with your identity. Living in a world like that can make you think that beauty is defined by straight hair and pale skin. Living in a world like that can make you think that intelligence is determined by the lack of melanin. Living in a world like that can make you think that the white man's ice is colder, that his sugar is sweeter, that his water is wetter, instead of realizing that the blacker the berry, the sweeter the juice. See, God did not create you to hate yourself. 
And when you try to be someone and when you try to be something uh, that you're not, uh, what you do uh, is you create a signal uh, that tells yourself uh, that you are not comfortable uh, with who you are. Uh, what you do uh, is you create an environment uh, that says uh, you don't like the person uh, that you become. Uh, but what I like about our text uh, is that Ehud shows us uh, how powerful it is uh, when you embrace uh, your own identity uh, and you refuse uh, to allow the ignorance of others uh, to reduce uh, who you are. Uh, you ought to open your mouth uh, and say it loud. Uh, Jesus, I, I shall hope you finished that sentence. Say, say it loud. In, in, in our text today, we get to see Ehud as a mighty warrior. We, we see Ehud in, in all of his glory. But I would like to suggest to you that for Ehud to be elevated to the position of a judge and for Ehud to become a mighty warrior and for Ehud to be used mightily as an instrument of liberation, uh, he had to move beyond the negativity and overcome those who tried to devalue his person, uh, and he had to become comfortable uh, with who God created him to be, and because he was comfortable uh, with who God created him to be, God could use him uh, in a unique way. We see in our text, that after 18 years of oppression, God uses Ehud to deliver the Israelites out of the hand of the Moabites. Verse 13 of our text says that Eglon came and attacked Israel and they took possession of the city of Palms. Now the reason that I highlight that verse is because the city of Palms is the familiar city of Jericho. The city of Palms is the city of Jericho. Jericho is a familiar city for Bible readers. It was Jericho where the people of God saw the power of God when the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. It was in Joshua chapter 6 that the Lord gave specific instruction on how to march around the city of Jericho. The instructions culminated on the seventh day with Israel marching around the city seven times. And after marching around the city seven times, all the people lifted their voices. They shouted a great shout and the wall came down. See, Jericho is a place of great victory. But what we see in verse 13 is that in order to have, listen to this, total victory, you not only have to defeat the enemy without, but you've also got to defeat the enemy within. In, in, in verse 12, of our text the Bible says that the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord and because they did this evil the Lord gave Eglon king of Moab power over Israel and when we look at Ehud today what I want you to see is that Ehud represents someone who has experienced total victory not, not just victory over the enemy, but he even experienced victory over the enemy. Help me, Holy Ghost. He, he not only sees victory over the enemy without, but he also experiences victory from the enemy within. I want you to know that it is no small task to obtain total victory. But Ehud is, is able to achieve total victory, and he does this by overcoming the obstacles and overcoming the barriers that would have defeated him if he had not embraced who he was. 
Bible says that Ehud brought a tribute to Eglon. And it appears that, that it was custom to bring a gift or to pay tribute to the ruling king. Since the tribute was, was carried by a number of men, it, it may have been a tribute of food or wool. Once the tribute was delivered, once the tribute was presented, Ehud and those who carried the tribute, they left. But on the way back, Ehud told the other men to keep going. He turned back around and he went to go see King Eglon. Now, as any good king would, King Eglon had guards that were assigned to protect him. King Eglon had his own security detail. And before anyone was granted access to see the king, they would first have to be searched before they could enter into the king's presence. And even though Ehud had been searched by the king's security, even though he had to go through the security check, he somehow managed to still get an audience with the king having a sharp sword concealed in his clothing. My brothers and my sisters, this this, this is an important lesson, and, and it's a lesson that, that I don't want us to miss. See, in, in, in life, what is often viewed as a disadvantage can become an advantage if you have a proper view of yourself. The, the, the very things that, that are seen as a weakness or a shortcoming, they can actually become a blessing if you have a proper view of yourself. W watch this. For, 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 for years, for years, our community was called the hood. For, for years, our community was called the ghetto. And that's why those who, who grew up in the hood and then gained a little bit of access and affluence, they, they looked at their surroundings and, and, and they undervalued what they saw. They, they looked at their surroundings and they saw a disadvantage. They looked at their surroundings and they saw a shortcoming. And because they couldn't see the value of who they were and what they had, they missed the blessing. See, 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 see the reality is, because that little house in the hood that Big Mama owned, because that house didn't have a two-car garage. Because that house didn't have a media room. Because that house that, that Big Mama owned in the hood, because it only had one bathroom, and because it didn't have central air or, or heating, and, and because you had to have a window unit. But, but be, because... Uh, the, 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 the house that, that Big Mama had didn't look like the, the houses in, in, in the other neighborhoods when, when the Eglons of the world made an offer to buy Big Mama's house. It, it was seen as a blessing because $50,000 seems like a whole lot of money. But if you would just fast forward 10 years in the place that was once called the hood, the place that was once labeled the ghetto, is now called the new revitalized historical district. Help me, Holy Ghost. And, 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 and Big Mama's house that, that you sold for $50,000 is now worth $300,000. What we've got to understand is that what is often viewed as a disadvantage can become an advantage when you have a proper view of yourself. Bible says that Ehud was left-handed. 
being left-handed was seen as a disadvantage. But, but Ehud, Ehud he, he had a proper view of himself and, and, and he didn't see himself as, as disadvantaged. He just saw himself as different. Ehud had a proper view of himself and, and he saw himself as unique, not as unusual. See, Ehud, he, he asked for a private audience with the king and, and he was able to get past the king's guard with the concealed weapon and he was able to do it because he was different. Stay, stay with me this morning. See, see normally a right-handed person wears his sword on his left side. And they do that because it's easier and faster to draw your sword when you begin to engage in combat if your sword is on the opposite side of your body. So the king's guard, what the king's guard did is, is they made the assumption that Ehu was right-handed. And, and, and because they made the assumption that Ehud was right-handed, they only checked his left side. But since Ehud was different, since Ehud was left-handed, Ehud kept his sword on his right side. E Ehud kept his sword on his right side and because his sword was on his right side when the guards checked his left side they overlooked the fact that he was carrying a concealed weapon see the assumptions of the guards was that Ehud was right handed and in their assumption of Ehud they underestimated what Ehud was capable of See, in, in, in their assumption of Ehud, they dismissed him because they undervalued him. Listen, this morning, I, I feel good. Y'all pray for me. I want you to hear this morning the reality that you should never let anyone reduce who you are. See, the guards, they searched Ehud and they thought they knew what they were dealing with. They examined him. They sized him up. But what they didn't realize is that he was so confident in who he was. What they didn't realize is that they had just encountered somebody who had already conquered the enemy within. They encountered somebody who had risen above the ignorance of those who wanted to label him defective and say that something was wrong with him because he was different. And when you can overcome the enemy within, when you understand that God created you valuable, when you understand that you are purpose, you are on your way to experiencing total victory. Jesus. See, Ehud had already conquered the enemy within. And now God was about to give him the victory from the enemy without. Uh, please don't miss the order. Uh, before he fought the battle, Ehud already knew who he was. Before he stepped foot in the king's palace, before the guards patted him down, Ehud already knew who he was. But please don't miss the order because the order shows us that Ehud did not need the battle to affirm his identity, but rather Ehud could fight the battle because he knew who he was. Bible says that, that Ehud was granted a private meeting with the king. And when Ehud entered the presence of the king, he approached him and the king rose from his seat. And then Ehud reached with his left hand hand and the Bible says he reached with his left 
hand. Don't miss that. It's in verse 21. The Bible says he reached with his left hand. Understand that Ehud is about to experience total victory and it is about to happen because he was comfortable with what made him different. Bible says that that, that with his left hand he, he drew his sword and, and, and then uh, when he drew his sword uh, he plunged it uh, into the king's belly uh, the bible says he then uh, escaped uh, to Sariah and when he arrived in Sariah he blew a trumpet uh, in the hill country of Ephraim uh, and the Israelites uh, prepared themselves for battle uh, now there's something uh, that I don't want you to miss uh, and it's found um, in verse 28 uh, in verse 28 uh, Ehud said to the Israelites uh, follow me uh, for the Lord has given Moab uh, your enemy uh, into your hands uh, don't miss uh, what Ehud said uh, uh, Ehud said uh, the Lord has given Moab your enemy uh, into your hands. Uh, listen uh, to what he didn't say. Uh, uh, Ehud uh, did not say, uh, I made uh, myself uh, a double-edged sword. Uh, and after I made uh, the double-edged sword, uh, I went uh, to the king's palace. Uh, and when I went uh, to the king's palace, uh, I snuck past uh, the king's guards. Uh, and once I snuck past uh, the king's guards, uh, I took out the king that's not what Ehud said but Ehud said it is the Lord who has given Moab your enemy into your hands in other words God is no respecter of persons and if you embrace who you are if you embrace whose you are then you can get total victory too I, I, I like that I like that because Ehud shows us that it doesn't matter if you're left handed Ehud shows us that it doesn't matter if you're right handed what really matters is whose hands you're in a basketball in my hands is worth about $19 but a basketball in LeBron James hand is worth $153 million. Uh, what really matters uh, is whose hands uh, you're in. Uh, see, a football uh, in my hand uh, is worth about $25. Uh, but a football uh, in Patrick Mahomes' hands uh, is worth uh, 450 million uh, what really matters uh, is whose hands uh, you're in uh, see a tennis racket uh, in my hands uh, is absolutely uh, useless uh, but a tennis racket uh, in Serena Williams hands uh, is 23 grand slams uh, what really matters uh, is whose hands uh, you're in uh, see a rod uh, in my hand uh, will keep away uh, a vicious dog uh, but a rod in the Moses hands will part the Red Sea what really matters is whose hands you're in see a slingshot in my hand is nothing but a kid's toy but a slingshot in David's hand is a mighty weapon that can take down a giant see what really matters is whose hands you're in two fish and five loaves of bread uh, in my hands uh, is just a couple of fish sandwiches uh, but two fish uh, and five loaves of bread uh, in God's hand uh, it will feed uh, 5,000 uh, what really matters uh, is whose hands uh, you're in uh, see nails uh, in my hands uh, might build uh, a little birdhouse uh, but nails uh, in Jesus hand uh, it has the power uh, to save uh, the world uh, because what really matters uh, is whose hands uh, you're in uh, see Ehud shows us uh, that it does not matter uh, if you're left handed uh, or right handed uh, it does not matter uh, if you're left handed uh, or right handed uh, but what matters uh, is whose hands uh, you're in uh, and when you put your hands uh, in the master's hands uh, it gives you the confidence uh, to be uh, 
who God created you to be. It gives you the confidence to say it loud. I am what God created me to be. So put your concerns, put your worries, put your fears, put your hopes, put your dreams, put your family, put your job, put your health, put your finances, put your relationships, and put your faith in the hands of God, and God will give you total victory. Somebody shout, I've got purpose. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter if you're left-handed or right-handed. What matters is whose hand you're in. And this morning, I, I don't want to leave. I, I don't want to end this worship experience before I make sure you are in the hands of God. It, it, it's one thing to, to hear a sermon. It's one thing to be encouraged by the word of God. But transformation happens when you start to act upon what you've heard. And today I, I want to invite you. Hallelujah. I, I want to invite you to put yourself in the master's hand. It, 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 it's not about your gifts. It's, it's not about your talents. In, in fact, I, I heard it said that the greatest ability in the world is availability. It, it, it's not a specific talent, but the greatest ability in the world is availability. And that is the question that I want to ask you this morning. Are you available to God? Can, can you say, God, I'm available to you. God, I, I'm available. I'm available to you. God, I'm, I'm not just going to connect with you on Sunday mornings. I'm, I'm not just going to call on you in, in case of emergency but but God my my schedule my my life it is it's open to you I'm available and when you want my attention God you have it and and, and when you want my presence God I'm going to show up God when you when you call me to, to do something, I'm not going to send you to, to voicemail. I'm not going to put it off and say I can do it when I get a little bit older. But I'm going to respond right now and say, God, I'm available to you. Because when you make yourself available, when you avail yourself to God, God can help you become comfortable with who God created you to be. When you become available to God, God can show you that you are not unusual, that you are not defective. God will show you that you are different and unique. If you are, if you are listening, this is an honest moment between you and God. If you are listening and you know that you never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that if you died today, you would not spend eternity with God. If you know that that's you, and today is a day that you want to give your life to the Lord, today is the day you place yourself in the master's hands and find out how valuable you are if that's you listen I just want you to to close your eyes right now as a matter of fact I, I, I want to talk to those who, who may have, have strayed away 
You may have stepped outside of God's will. But you say, you know what? This is the day that I am coming back to God. This is the day I'm coming back. Listen, all, all heads bow. Today, if, if you are going to connect with God for the first time, that means you're going to give your life to Christ. And all that simply means is that you realize that you are not perfect, that you have made mistakes, and that Jesus came and he died for you so that the mistakes that you've made, they don't have to ruin you. And all you've got to do is confess that and believe that, and you can become a part of the family of God. Listen, all heads bowed, all eyes closed. If you want to give your life to Jesus and be saved for the first time, or if you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, I just want you to pray, pray these words with me. Pray these words after me, simple prayer. Say, God, I admit that I'm not perfect. God, I am thankful that Jesus died for me. I'm thankful that Jesus paid the price for me. And I acknowledge and I accept him as Lord over my life. That means I'll make myself available. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time or if you prayed that prayer again to rededicate yourself, listen, we need to know. We, we need to know that, that you are available to God because we want to continue to pour into you. We want to continue to minister to you. We want to get you connected. And we just ask that, that, that you either share a comment on this thread or visit our website and, and send us an email. You can send us an email at Waco at gmail.com. S-T-L-U-K-E, St. Luke, A-M-E Waco at gmail.com. St. Luke, A-M-E Waco at gmail.com. We are looking and we are waiting for your email because we want to get to know you. We're so grateful and so thankful that you worship with us. We are grateful that you've taken time to commit to the Lord. And we pray God's choice blessings over you. What a powerful word from our pastor. Thank you for the word that you've shared with us on today. At this time, I would like to invite you to give your generosity and kindness has certainly supported us during this time as we continue to minister to the people of God in the city of Waco. Again, thank you for your generosity. If you would like to give, you may do so through the platforms below. The best way to give is to go to our website, stlukeamewaco.org, click on the Give tab and follow the directions from there. All of our announcements can be found at our new website, stlukeamewaco.org. I will invite you to go to our white website, check us out, and look and see what we're doing as we serve God. Again, thank you so much for being a part of this experience. We look forward to seeing you on next week. Let us now receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and may the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. In Jesus' name, everybody says amen. God bless you, and we'll see you next week.